Hey, how's it going? I hope that you're doing good today. It's a good day. It's Friday night over here. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. Just wanted to get on here and pray and see if anybody wanted to read God's word with me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the plans that you have for us. Good plans, plans to prosper us. We know that you've had our, you know, you knew our whole life played out before we were even born. So you got this plan and we just need to walk in it. We just need to seek a kingdom and say, Lord, which way is it? Which way do you want us to go? And we know good things happen when we do that. So we just want to continue to seek your kingdom. We know it's a, it's a life of blessing others and getting blessed. And it's just a, it's a good life, not a life that's not full of, we do have problems, but you, but you get a, you get us through them, Lord, and you do give us peace in that. And so we're just grateful for that. We know the enemy, he's trying to take us off, trying to entice us with worldly things and fleshly desires and just trying to, trying to lie to us, steal, kill and destroy, steal our peace and, and just destroy any good thing that we have going. So we do want to take our thoughts captive and stand strong on your word, Lord. We read your word and we know what you say about us and it is a lie. We ain't buying it no more. So, um, so Lord, we just stand here grateful right now for you, God, and everything that you're doing for us and continue to do what you've done. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Just speak to us as we read your word right here and just uh, tell us what you want us to hear. Thank you, Lord. So, yeah, I had a, I was kind of stressed out at work this morning. I had a, well, I knew it was my brother's birthday party. They were going out to dinner tonight, and I really wanted to make it to that, but I was working like an hour out of town, and I had a ton of stuff to do. It was actually like two days' worth of work. I was, but I, I was, We usually go up there tomorrow, but I was going up there today, uh, and I was going to try and get it all done so we don't have to go up tomorrow, but there was just no way I could do it. And once I figured out that I was going to have to come back tomorrow, it was like everything was was more relaxed and I was able to, to, to enjoy the rest of my day at work. But, um, but yeah, I really wanted to finish so I could get home and go to the, go to the, to the, to the dinner. And I got to thinking about another dinner, you know, the, the banquet, the banquet parable. Remember Jesus was talking to those people and he said, he was, this kind of starts it off. I got to read this first part, but then he turned, this is Jesus speaking, then he turned to his host. When you put on a luncheon or a banquet, he said, don't invite your friends, brothers, relatives, and rich neighbors, for they will invite you back and that will be your only reward. Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Then at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. That's Luke 14, 12 to 24, but then it goes on like this. This is that parable. Hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with this story, a man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready, but they all began making excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets. Into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported there was still room for more. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full for none of those I first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. Luke 14, 15 through 24. But, but yeah, I was just thinking how it could be. You know, I'm just glad that the Lord doesn't have it set up where it is definitely urgent. Like we want to make sure that everybody's ready, that they have a relationship 
with God, you know, before they die or before he comes back. But, but it's not, but he doesn't put that kind of pressure on us to go out there and, and, and make sure that everybody knows, although we do. Um, yeah, the people had the um, excuses, excuses in their dumb excuses, please. Kind of like they have today. I just bought a field and must inspect it. I've just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. What was the other one? Oh, I just got married so I can't come. Um, but yeah, so, um, but I'm glad the Lord doesn't, yeah, he doesn't put that kind of pressure on us. It's, a, it's all spirit led, but we still need to, um, so, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourself and making music to the Lord in your hearts. And give thanks for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians uh, 5, 15 through 20. So yeah, it's 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 important that yeah that we get that people be saved now and that we do what we can. But yeah, there's joy with the Lord and and um, and He does He doesn't put all that on us to to take that responsibility for everybody. So that's that's good. It's all it's all spirit led. The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish but that all should come and reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief and then the heavens will pass away with the roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Second Peter 3, uh, 9 through 10. So yeah, just looking at that parable of the great banquet, I feel like we're, we, we are the, we're the ones that are going out that need to go out and start inviting people you know, and, and talking to them about the Lord. I know everybody knows that there's churches out there that they can go to. Uh, everybody knows that, that, that there is about Christianity, but we can still go. We can still go talk to them and, and invite them to church or just talk to them about the Lord or, or, or whatever and get something, get something going. We're the messengers. We're the we're the ambassadors. God's calling on us. He chose us. He pulled us out of the darkness and, and brought us into His marvelous light, so we could go share uh, our testimonies and His goodness and and that. So so yeah, we do want to go. Oops, we do want to go tell everybody about that. So um, yeah, Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you that we are your messengers, that you do use us to spread the good news, God. And we want to see people come unto you, Lord. We want to see everybody at your banquet, God. We love you so much, Lord. And, and uh, we want everyone to have a relationship with you, Jesus. So good. So I just ask you to bless my friend right here in Jesus' name. Just let your will be done. Amen. All right. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.